before we dive into this review, this regular review, I have to kind of break the norm here and talk about something else that has taken the world by storm, not just the anime and manga industry, but the news that broke one over a week ago, the tragic and unexpected news of the passing of the GOAT, the legend, the legendary Akira Toriyama. And I've already made a statement about this, but I feel like it'd be a travesty if I didn't, if I didn't share my thoughts and opinions on this because Dragon Ball has had not only a huge impact on my life, but also as as a content creator, as somebody reviews manga, on somebody that reviews One Piece here and there, I reviewed Dragon Ball Super. I don't feel feel like I would be here. I don't. I feel like I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if it wasn't being introduced to the world of Dragon Ball, and that was all in partially due to Akira Toriyama and the vision he had that inspired countless generations. And it's crazy to think about the impact that it's had. On, not only in the anime manga industry, like the entire world, like not only the fans of Dragon Ball or the fan, those who check out anime and manga, like it's impossible to not associate anime and manga without Dragon Ball, without Akira Toriyama in the first place. That's resonated with so many people through so many different generations. And I still remember to this very day, like the first time I caught the initial episodes of Dragon Ball in his early stages. There's certain things that you remember. I remember that very vid vividly. I would watch it after school. And depending on the day of the week, I would actually watch that. I would actually, later on, if it was a Friday, I would either watch WCW Monday Nitro, and I, or later on I would watch WWF Raw at the time. And that was just basically my week. And and to think that it's had so much, so much influence and impact on my life, shaped me who I am today. I don't know where I'd be right now. I definitely wouldn't be in this chair talking about One Piece. In a situation like this, there isn't a whole lot you could say, like, other than I express my heartfelt condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of Akira Toriyama. It's a tragic, unfortunate situation that is still shocking at this point. And on a side note, I know Oda wrote a message, a statement about this, Soda Kishimoto, which is pretty cool. There is an article to those statements if you want. I'll leave the link to that article in the description box below if you haven't checked it out. Oda and Kishimoto did a much better job of paying homage than I ever could to the GOAT, the, the greatest of all time, Akira Toriyama. Like, the impact of Dragon Ball, I don't think... It, it's hard to say it'll be ever matched or duplicated again. Like One Piece is like exploding popularity, but like Dragon Ball was the original. Right? There's... There's nothing like it. It's not, it's not just like the anime and manga industry that's come together and expressed their thoughts and opinions about this. There's celebrities across the world. There's so many people touched by what Akira Toriyama's done. And it can't be stated enough. Like, it's it's wild. And it's unfortunate. It's tragic. And for the memories and for the life that we've gotten because of Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama, thank you. Thank you to... All you've done, you've inspired countless generations with every character you've introduced at some point or another. It will never be duplicated again. You'll be sorely, sorely missed. Hello everybody, how's it going? So welcome to another One Piece review. This time we're covering manga chapter 1110. I feel like with this chapter specifically, Oda has made it a crystal clear objective to make this path to Elba for Luffy the Strats as difficult as possible because hearing how obvious he's made it that we're going to Elba. Look at the whole situation involving the Vegapunk telling Nami her log pose is pointing in the direction of Elba. So if that wasn't obvious enough. So we already knew they were going to Elba but now Oda decided to bring the giants involved in escorting them to Elba which given the end of this chapter I I feel like they're going to guide the Straw Hats away from Egghead Island. They're not going with them. Because that would be crazy. With all five members of the Gora say, like, no. The only definite outcome is the Straw Hats are going to Elba. There's way too many plot points for them not to. Speaking of change of plans, we have Yamato and Momonosuke in the cover story. And with the Wano cover series, we've got last chapter, we got the submerged Wano. And it's the same place that Robin and Law saw when they were talking with Sukiyaki Kazuki. 
when they were talking about the HO weapon Pluton existing, we still need to get that revealed, which I feel like maybe, which that could be a reason as to what, as to why we're getting this cover story. Another is maybe Oda is going to do something with Yamato because she pretty much echoes the same thing to Momonosuke that she said to her, Momonosuke and Kinemon before the end of Wano is she's going to explore Wano and she's making it seem like she's going to leave Wano even though she said she's going to stay there to protect the samurai from external threats. That's the reason why she stayed even though that was a change of plans. She echoes the same thing here. Momonosuke looks like she, he doesn't believe a word of it or he's either, he's either upset because Momonosuke gave that speech and it hardly meant anything. Whether or not this leads to anything, and it kind of has to because what's the point? Because we had the Vince Smoke escape cover story and that led to number one, the Vince Smoke's escape in Hawkeye Island. And number two, it led to Judge and Caesar Clown reuniting, which I feel like is going to have an impact at some point. Just like how Pudding was captured by the Blackbeard Pirates, and that was introduced into a cover story. Also, we got Seo Kiji as well. Again, so these cover stories have, this cover series has to have a tie in. We start off the chapter looking outside in from the island with the entrance of the Gora say, and you have the sparks emit, emitting from everywhere. You have the, the Mecha Giraffe that Bluegrass, that Vice Admiral Bluegrass and Vice Admiral Doll was on, and I believe they were going to, they, they mentioned about the ship belonging, well, Vice Admiral Dole mentioned the ship belonging to the Warriors from Elwha, considering she is familiar. She's a she's the apprentice of Sol when she when he was a Marine. So, like I said, whether or not it leads to a confrontation with Robin, I don't know. We see the Marines looking in, and I'm surprised they're not knocked out by this, especially with all five Elders appearing. So, so we see Atlas, Frankie, and Barney as they're with one of the Giants, and... Bonnie's asking, is everyone going to be okay? Meanwhile, while they're looking in one direction, you got you got the, what, the giant from Elbath looking at another direction where he's definitely noticing something. So I'm assuming that Bluegrass fired the arrow that's hurled and it cuts away from. But we also see some members, we also see giants working together with the pacifistas, which is pretty cool. I wonder if there's a deeper meaning in there, considering Kuma is a member of the Buccaneer tribe and the pacifistas are pretty much clones of the original. So I don't know. So that, that may be something we learn on Elbaf. I hope we learn on Elbaf, which may be a reason why both Kuma and Barney are tagging along. Like I said, the arrows fired at them, we don't get to see what happens. It cuts away to the room of authority. To where obviously the Gorosei are not there, they're obviously present on the naked island. The pre-recorded message by Vegapunk is still being played out and we still get to hear it, we still get to see it. Meanwhile, you got the entrance of the rest of the Gor all five elders in their zone forms revealed at last. So Saturn was the first. So Saint Jay Garcia Saturn was the one that planted the demonic circles to summon the Gorose, which we still need to learn more about that. But it's like I said, it's on the surface, so but this is the same thing that happened last time. While Gorosei are making their entrance, we get the dialogue from the pre-recorded message from Vegapunk where it says, I doubt someone who wanted to interfere could make it in time. Which I, I kind of question like, what's going to happen after this? Because we know the Strats at some point are going to make it to the Elbath. What's going to happen with the Gorosei? Are they going to fall here or are they going to escape Egad Island? And we're going to get a confrontation with the Strats at some point. We already seen Saturn obviously in his Ox demon form or his bison form with his spider legs. We got we got Saint Marcus Mars as tagline is a eerie bird or Itsumare, which is part of the Japanese yokai. In fact, three of the Gurusei are a part of the 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 zone forms are references to the yokai. So obviously, Saturn's the first that we got introduced to. It Saint Mar Marcus Mars is another one. Izumare is a statement saying, until when? So that's kind of interesting. Saint Top Man Wakori. The Yuki is, or the boar, is, an, is another reference to a Jap Japanese yokai. So that's pretty cool. So we also get Saint Shepherd Jupiter. His form is nothing more than a sandworm. That's a non-yokai. And same thing with 
with St. Ethan Baron v, v. Nagestero. He's also a non-yokai, so I think that's kind of interesting. But I think Nagestero has probably the best form out of the out of the five members of the Gorosei. Case in, mostly due in part to the fact that he's already in his, in his hybrid form, but I don't know. I just, I just thought there's something about that form that screams this epic and boss level. The skeleton horse that seeks revenge after being burned to death. That's kind of cool if Oda's taking reference from that, so holy crap. So yeah, he, de he definitely has the best appearance out of the five Gorosei. So Luffy is actually having a... He's actually freaking out at this point. You see, you see Sanji thinking about getting in contact with Nami, but also if you notice, Sanji is also carrying Vegapunk. So even if they try to silence him by killing Vegapunk, like the message is still going on. So they need to just shut that down immediately, considering the whole world is listening and watching. And that's another thing too. The whole world is gonna watch the five elders in his own forms for the first time. Like they're not supposed to. So Vegapunk has caused them a lot of problems. And we get introduced to probably one of the best panels. Now, I said a couple of reviews ago that the panel where Luffy simultaneously blocked Saturn's attack while grabbing hold of Kizaru is probably the best panel of the entire year so far. This is a close second because you've got all five members of the Gorosei in their, in their zone forms staring down Luffy in gear fifth. That is epic as hell. I was curious whether or not Luffy was actually going to take on all five members of the Gorosei. He only... Only two of the five elders actually try and attack Luffy, while the other three go on and do their business on Agate Island. And immediately, Nashjuro is the first one to go into action. Immediately. So like I said, Nashjuro is the first to go in and attack one of the pacifistas. And immediately, this attack's going to spring up. And it's Katana that's, for the first time being unsheathed, we, this is the first time we're seeing his sword. So he uses it, he goes in, he, he cuts the pacifista, but if you notice, it looks like he's also freezing solid too, similar to Brook. I'll get back to that in a minute. There's a lot of speculation about the sword that Nashjuro holds is the Shodai Katetsu. We still don't know, because we've never seen it before. However, three things, like I said, he's using an attack that's similar to Brook. I don't know if that's a Shodai Katetsu or not, but it, but if it is, he's either using Armored Haki on his blade, or that is a Black Blade. So, which is one of the 12, and the Shodai Katetsu is one of the 12 Supreme Grade Swords, so that wouldn't be a shocker. But I will, the other, th the other thing I'll mention is I find it interesting if that is the Shodai Katetsu. Co coincidentally enough, we see Zoro and Rob Lucci still going at it, and we see one of the swords Zoro has fly into the air. I'm pretty sure that's a Sandai Katetsu. Pretty much, we've seen the Nidai Katetsu back on Wano. Like a lot of people thought he was going to get an upgrade. No, that did not happen. Luchi is still talking with this trash talk. Unfortunately, it comes to bite him in the ass because this looks like to be the end of the fight. Thank God. We see Jinbei is having a conversation over the Dendamushi with Zanji and he's like, sorry, you got to take care of it, Jinbei. And remember, Nami's plan was to get Jinbei to get to Zoro's location to make sure he doesn't get lost. Not to aid him against Luchi. He did clearly. He did not need the help. And and Sanji's like, why the hell is he still playing around? Like he's such a nuisance. Like just take him out. Like which I echo as well. Like just end it already. And I don't know if like is Zoro heard it or not. But he on soon as that conversation's happening, Zoro takes notice of something, and then immediately goes in for the kill on Rob Luchi. I hope it's the kill, but I doubt it considering he, has a, he always finds a way to worm back in to the series. So, either way, Jinbei's headed to Zoro's location. He catches the Sandai Katetsu, which is badass, which immediately reminds me of Log Town, which I think that is the Sandai Katetsu. While this is going on, though, you got Luchi using finger pistol leopard spots to, like, attack Zoro. He's dodging like a boss. Like, where was this at the beginning stages of the fight? And this is Zoro that's nerfed. So he's dodging the Luchi's attacks. He catches the Sanjai Katetsu, three sword style, uh, Leopard Hunter, which is badass. Immediately, that's it for Luchi. He's, you have like, Nastaro taking care of Pasifistas left and right. Like I said, it looked like he's using a similar technique to the Devil Fruit that 
Brooke has because he's freezing his opponents. So, considering we know the the Gurusei like to experiment, I would not be surprised because we know that Barney gained the abilities of the AJ fruit with act, without actually eating the devil fruit itself. So I wouldn't be surprised if Nashiro has a form of Brooks devil fruit without actually consuming it. So that's something else to keep in mind. St. Marcus Mars is going airborne and he's trying to attack the barrier that's the front of the frontier dome that's in the lava phase. And I think Sanji realizes this, which is why he tries to warn Nami and the others, you need to get the hell out of Dodge because there's a huge bird coming your way. Get the hell out of Dodge. Like, he's swarming in and he's trying to attack the barrier, which he doesn't work, at least not right now. And we see Nostro take it out past the feasters left and right. We see we see St. Shepherd Jupiter going on the ground. Meanwhile, Saturn is also trying to attack Luffy at the same time. So keep that in mind. Luffy's taking notice of Jupiter going underground like a t typical earthworm. In this case, he's a sandworm, but then he pops up like one. And then we see Usopp and Nami along with Chopper. We see Lil Wolf and Brooke in the background. We find out that the Sunny has rendezvoused with Nami's group, so that's pretty cool. So then Jinbei's like, I understand the situation. Even if it hasn't been settled yet, I'll do everything in my power to get us out of here. Like, oh, so I guess what's going to happen is he's going to use his ability to, like, manipulate water to get him out. Even though I feel like that's going to be the giant's role. I'll get to that in a second. Yeah, so we see literally Zoro versus Luchi is done. It's it's a wrap. It's a, we see Jinbei looking on. Meanwhile, you've got St. Jupiter trying to swallow Luffy whole, much like Kaido did. Or in this case, the giants show up. Dorian Bragi sliced Shepard Jupiter in half and then save Luffy. And Luffy's like, yay! Reuniting with the giant, say, hey, it's you guys again. So that was kind of epic. We knew this was going to happen because it was teased a couple of chapters ago. The, the reunion's already happened. So, like I said, I feel like the giants, Dorian Bragi especially, are going to use their technique similar to what they did at Little Garden to escort, get the Sunny away from Egan Island. Whether or not Vegapunk makes it out, I don't know. We know Bonnie and Kuma are tagging along. I wonder, even if Stella doesn't make it the original Vegapunk, I wonder if they, the satellites, some of them, are going to make it with them. York is still somewhere on this island. So is Robin. There's going to be a rendezvous with the rest of the gang. Luffy's going to be the last to jump on board. I, like I said, I don't see this being a full-fledged fight with the Gorosei involving Luffy because it's either... The Gorosei get taken down now, or they get taken down later on. There has to be a reason why Oda decided to bring introduce the rest of the Gorosei after introducing Saturn as the primal threat. So someone else has to show up, especially with the visual dead Damushi playing all of this. Like, oh, Dorian Bragi, whether or not they sacrifice themselves, or whether or not they just do something to, like, get the strats away... They're going to echo the same thing here, only in this case, it's going to lead them to get to Elbaf. And I feel like the reason I say that is because I the mention the point I brought up at the beginning of this review is that Oda made it a point to have Vagabunk tell Nami the log post is pointing in the direction of Elbaf anyway. There's no reason to have that unless Oda's changed his mind. Obviously, they're not sticking around. The fact that Oda decided to wrap up Zoro versus Luchi in this chapter when he could have done it sooner. And like I said before, like, yeah, it, it, it was interesting, but I would have preferred to see this fight with both of, both of them at full. I don't think the outcome would have changed all that much, but it would have been a more interesting fight. Had this been done with both of them at full, I don't, like I said, I think it would have been GG regardless, especially since Zoro did not put the bad down on at any point in this fight. Like, and you can make that what you will, but I just feel like this, like it would have been a more interesting fight had it been at full instead. I get why Oda did it. He had like the callback, he had like the Kaku Zoro rematch, he had the Luffy Luchi rematch, which we got coming up shortly in the anime. Like it's for nostalgia purposes, I get it, but like I said, I feel like the more, more interesting fight would have been Zoro versus Luchi with both of them at full. This you can't, again, it's the same thing with Kizaru versus Luffy. You can't take it seriously because, one, both characters don't take it seriously. And number two, 
one of them was nerfed going into that fight. So now with the Gursay it here, that seems more threatening than an Avril being here, which is crazy to think about, but it's just the reality of the situation. Like I don't know what that says about Akainu, Fleet Admiral Akainu, but there has to be something that changes with him. Otherwise, right now, the Gursay are more the threat than he is. I don't know what's going to happen here. If Nasjura is going to fight Zoro here. Like, a lot of people seem to think that's a matchup for the future. If it is, then that would confirm that, that Nasjura has to have the Shodai Kotetsu at this point. Like, we don't know. Like, he may be the strongest member of the Gursay. From what we saw in this chapter, yeah, I could definitely see that. But we still have to see what the others are capable of. See, Oda could do something completely out of left field, and we really could get a full-scale wall with the Shrai Hats involved in the Gorosei, which would be epic, but also wild at the same time, when we have Elbaf knocking on our door. I thought it was an incredible chapter after after all the build-up, but let me know what you guys think down below. Like the review if you did it, thumbs up, I appreciate that. Subscribe to for more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.